We all have that special piece of furniture that we simply love, whether it's the family heirloom grand piano that's been handed down from generation to generation, or a simple coffee table that reminds us of conversations long gone. However, over time, its appearance can let us down. But thankfully, there is a way to revive the wood and breathe new life back into our most prized possession. For this project, you'll need some paint stripper and a scraper, some spray paint, some varnish, sandpaper, a sponge and gloves, new towel mosaic, tile adhesive and an applicator, a bucket and a mixer. So our first step is to remove any loose pieces. So you can see the mosaic tile just literally comes off. If it is stuck on with any remaining glue, you can use a scraper just to scrape it off. The next step is to inspect the integrity of our table so that we can fix it before we actually make it look pretty. And as I can see from here, it's still in pretty good nick. The legs seem pretty secure. I don't see any loose joints. It doesn't seem rickety at all. So that's a good score for us. So what I'm gonna do with this table is replace the mosaic that we had here with something more fresh and more contemporary. I'm also going to be doing a dipped paint effect from about midway upwards to the top. And then the bottom of the uh, legs, I'm going to keep natural and just varnish that uh, for its natural beauty. The first step is sanding. So I'm gonna start off with an 80 grit sandpaper and then move on to a smoother 180 grit sandpaper. For the areas that will be painted, we just want to sand the wood to a smooth finish. The paint and mosaic will cover the discoloration left by the old varnish. For the rounded edges, it is a good idea to make use of a sanding sponge as it molds around the curved edges. An orbital sander makes light work of the flat surfaces. Now that I've finished sanding all these smooth surfaces, I'm going to focus my attention on the legs. Now because they're rounded, sandpaper wouldn't work as well. So I'm actually going to apply paint stripper to remove the varnish adequately. When it comes to using a paint stripper, always follow the instructions on the product packaging. Two coats ensure that the product covers all the areas where we want to revive the wood. The paint stripper is busy working, so we'll leave that for a couple of more minutes. I'm going to focus my attention onto the tabletop. I'm using a two-in-one, which is a paint as well as a primer. And it's a beautiful white, which will give me the finish that I'm looking for. For a solid coverage, apply a few light coats and allow enough drying time between the coats. While the paint is drying, I'm going to focus now on the table bottom. The paint stripper is already dry and I'm going to start scraping off all the old paint and old varnish. Now remember, use a paint scraper, but go lightly, let the paint stripper do the work. A paint scraper works well when it comes to removing the old varnish from the wood. With most of the varnish removed, move on to a fine grit sandpaper to smooth the wood down to a new, untreated wooden surface. I'm going to clean off any dust and dirt with a rag and some mineral turpentine, and then we can mark off the top half of our base before we spray paint. I'm going to use some masking tape just to tape off the areas where we're actually going to paint. So I'm going to put a layer around the leg from the midway down, and then I'm gonna take some newspaper and then cover it up so that we won't have any overspray. With the areas that you don't want painted marked off, apply a few light coats of spray paint. Remove the paper and masking tape and allow the paint to dry. With the spray paint now dry, I'm going to mount the base to our tabletop. So I'm going to use the underside of our tabletop and place our base in the center. And then what I'll do is mark out where I need to drill our pilot holes. I'm going to use a piece of scrap wood so I don't drill into our table. And I'm just going to mark out approximately in the center of each where I need to drill our pilot holes. Thank you. 
Now that I've completed all our pilot holes, it's time to secure using some glue and screws. So I'm gonna take our base and place some glue on the top like this, on each four corners. Then using the marks that I did earlier, I'm gonna place it exactly on the center. Now obviously I need to turn our table over so that we can secure with screws from the top. So I'm gonna use a couple of clamps just to hold it in place. Now I'm gonna use some wood screws to secure it from the top. Don't worry too much about the heads because we're going to use some tile grout and adhere so you won't see them anyway. We can remove our clamps and start with our mosaic. Now, as you can see, I've cut a few pieces of mosaic tile and I've already cut them to size. If you find that your mosaic tile is a little bit big, you can use a tile cutter to cut it to the right size. But that's the thing I like about mosaic. It has a little mat over here, so you can literally cut it out to the exact shape of your application or your table. So, now that I've done a dry fit, I'm ready to go and mix our tile adhesive. I'm using a three-in-one tile mixture, which is a tile adhesive, grouting, as well as a sealant. I'm replacing the water content with a latex additive and adding three parts of the tile adhesive to one part of the latex additive, which enhances bond strength, flexibility, and water resistance. With my three-in-one towel mixture now complete, I can apply it to the base of my table. So I'm just gonna pop out my mosaic tiles, and then I'm gonna use this applicator just to scoop up some towel mixture and literally put it into place. Now you'll see I'm creating some grooves in here and that gives adhesion to our mosaic tiles. So now that our tile adhesive has completely cured, we're going to move on to grouting. So I'm going to put the grout into each of the grooves in between each of the tiles, just to ensure that we have a smooth, flat surface. Now because it's a 3-in-1, it will adhere, it'll be for grouting, and it'll also protect and seal the top of our table, so that any water or moisture will not damage our table. While that's busy drying, we'll apply two coats of varnish to our legs to protect and revive our wood. When it comes to protecting the wooden legs, a varnish or wood preservative is a good option. Two coats ensure a proper coverage and will keep the wood looking great for longer. Using a damp sponge, simply wash off the excess grouting to reveal the newly tiled tabletop. So I've wiped off our grout with a sponge and then I've uh, buffed it out with this cloth. Remember, read the package instructions to determine how much drying time between each coat of varnish. Now, I'm gonna let this cure, and after that, I'm gonna find a spot in our house to place it. Remember, go out there, have fun, and find old pieces like this to revive them and make them great again. <laughs>